वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ इकोन वन टू वन फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल इकोनॉमिक्स इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट दी लॉ ऑफ डिमिनिशिंग मार्जिनल यूटिलिटी टुडे वी हैव टू लर्न अबाउट लॉ ऑफ इक्वी मार्जिनल यूटिलिटी सो इन दैट वी हैव टू सी द मीनिंग ऑफ लॉ ऑफ इक्वी मार्जिनल रिटर्न हु गेव दिस लॉ ऑफ इक्वी मार्जिनल रिटर्न then statement of the law assumptions of the law then explanation of law with the example then practical importance and limitations of the law so firstly this law is known as the law of substitution this law is known as the law of substitution or principle of proportionality so always keep in mind these are the two names of law of equi marginal returns and this law also known as the gosens second law which was the gosens first law law of diminishing marginal utility it was the gosens first law and law of equi marginal utility it was the gosens second law okay and law of equi marginal utility is also known as the law of substitution and principle of proportionality now the statement of the law as like the statement of diminishing marginal utility statement of law of equi marginal utility is also given by alfred marshall now according to marshall the law implies that means according to alfred marshall the law implies that or shows that if a person has a thing which he can put to several uses means if that person particular have any commodity or a thing he can use that particular thing for the several uses he will be distribute it between those uses means he will distribute that thing between different uses or those uses in a such a way that it has a same marginal utility in all means he will distribute that thing between different uses in a such a way that from which he will get the same utility in the all parts of that commodity or good so that is the statement given by alfred marshall so as we know the consumers generally having the problem of the goods having the problem while buying the goods and services because he has a limited source of income because he has a limited income because our human wants are unlimited and means to fulfill it they are the limited so see he left with the choice making means that consumer he has to make a choice regarding the purchase of commodities their quantities so that the purchase that are decided upon the ensure him maximum satisfaction okay in general life if you think about the any consumer he always try to get maximum satisfaction whatever he is purchasing with his limited amount of income then the consumer aim aim set maximizing the total utility by consuming possible goods and services in a given income constant or in a given level of income now in this process the consumer substitutes the goods having greater utility for which have a lesser utility now suppose if we have a choice suppose if we have two three choice which good we will purchase or which good we will choose the goods which having the higher utility now this process is continue till the marginal utilities of commodities purchase are equalize means we purchase up to the that level till the marginal utilities means additional utilities from the purchase of all the units of goods it will be equalize or it will be same for all hence the name law of equi marginal utility is given so this is about the statement of the law of equi marginal utility now as we know for every law there are assumption similarly here are also some assumptions for the law of equi marginal utility so first assumption 
द कंज्युमर बिहेव रैशनली मीन्स ऑन विच कंज्युमर वी आर गोइंग टू एप्लाय द लॉ ऑफ इफ यू मार्जिनल युटिलिटी दैट कंज्युमर मस्ट बिहेव रैशनली मीन्स ही मस्ट बी अ नॉर्मल पर्सन ही मस्ट बिहेव रैशनल देन ही मस्ट हैव फुल नॉलेज अबाउट द कमोडिटीज देयर एट्रीब्यूट्स एट्रीब्यूट्स मीन्स देयर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स देयर प्राइसेस इन द मार्केट मीन्स दैट कंज्युमर मस्ट बी अ नॉलेजेबल अबाउट द कमोडिटीज कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ कमोडिटीज प्राइसेस ऑफ द कमोडिटीज एक्सेट्रा नाउ थर्ड अदम्शन इज दैट यूटिलिटी इज मेजरेबल कार्डिनली इन टर्म्स ऑफ यूटिल्स नाउ मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट अदम्शन इज दैट इन द लॉ ऑफ इक्वी मार्जिनल यूटिलिटी इन द लॉ ऑफ सब्सटीट्यूशन और इन द लॉ ऑफ प्रिंसिपल ऑफ प्रपोर्शनैलिटी और इन द गोसेन सेकेंड लॉ यूटिलिटी इज मेजरेबल इन टर्म्स ऑफ यूटिल सो हियर यूटिल इज द यूनिट ऑफ utility now fourth assumption of the law commodities that are chosen are divisible and substitutable means those commodities which you, you are going to choose it must be a divisible or it must have different substitute so these are the four requirements or we can say four assumptions of law of equi marginal returns now while explaining this law we have to take the imaginary example of a consumer who is uh, having the income constraint who is having the limited income and he has to make a decision in the purchase of the allocations in the purchase of commodities so he can allow his income in a such a way that he will get the maximum satisfaction suppose let us assume that consumer has uh, got only 25 rupees to spend but from that limited cons- limited on income he has to spend that 25 rupees on the three vegetables suppose he has to purchase potato tomato and rich guard now suppose he has to purchase the three vegetables from the 25 rupees now the per unit price the per unit price of potato tomato and rich guard is same that is the 5 rupees suppose he has he has only 25 rupees so he can purchase only 5 units how many units he can purchase he can purchase only 5 units because he he has a 25 rupees only and per unit price is 5 rupees now the marginal utilities that derived from the consumption of potato tomato rich guard and money spent they are presented in given table now if you see the table here are the five number of units because he can purchase only five because it has the price of 5 rupees each and he has limited money that is the 25 rupees now potato tomato and rich guard the marginal utility is derived from potato is 19 16 14 10 5 from tomato is 22 21 20 16 14 and rich guard is 18 17 15 12 11 so these are the marginal utilities in terms of utils now suppose how rational consumer will behave he will choose the such commodities or such a combination or such a unit of commodities from which he will get the maximum satisfaction so firstly we have to choose the maximum values maximum utils from the potato that is 19 from the tomato which are the 22 21 and 20 and from the rich guard that is the 18 because we have to choose the combination of three vegetables so obviously that rational consumer he will choose the maximum values only or maximum utils only because that is the ultimate aim of every consumer from his limited income he always try to get maximum satisfaction or maximum utils or maximum utility now the marginal utilities are derived from the consumption of three vegetables by spending unit money each unit of money is equal to rupees 5 as we earlier know that first unit of 5 goes on potato it gives the marginal utility of 19 because in the potato column if you see the 19 is the maximum second unit 16 3rd 14 and so on 
Now, to maximize the satisfaction from the three vegetables, the consumer has to spend 25 rupees on the five units, five units of commodity. So he, he will spend in a such a way that marginal utility of last unit of money is will equal in all uses. Now, given the marginal utilities derived from three vegetables, the consumer has to spend first three units on tomato, one unit of each on potato and rich gourd respectively. Now, why he will choose the three units of tomato? Because from the three units of tomato, he will get the maximum utils. That's why he will choose the first three units of tomato. Then highest unit from potato, that is the 19, and highest unit from rich gourd, that is the 18. Because he has to choose the combination of three vegetables, that's why he will choose each one, means one unit from potato and one unit from rich gourd respectively. Now, if you make the summation of all the three combinations, you will get the combination of 100 utils. If you make the summation of 22 plus 21 plus 20 plus 19 plus 18, it will be 100. No another combination will yield more than 100 utils or more than this combination. Okay, so diagrammatically it is represented at tomato, potato and rich gourd. So at the end, the marginal utility for the all the units of commodity is equal. That is the law of equimarginal utility. Here units of money on the x-axis and marginal utility on the y-axis. Now the combination is going to hold good till some changes occur either in the prices or his income or his statements. This combination will be going to good or it will be satisfactory to the consumer till there will be no change in price or no change in his income or taste. So this law is also called as principle of proportionality because we spend the money in the proportion. In the proportion as the consumer allocates his expenditure in a such a way that marginal utilities of good purchase would be in proportion to their prices. That's why this law is known as the principle of proportionality. Now, consumer attaining the equilibrium by spending his limited money is shown below. Marginal utility of X, marginal utility of Y, marginal utility of Z, K price, and price of y and price of z is equal to so now the practical importance if we have learned now we have learned about the law of equimarginal utility what is the practical importance of this law so this law is uh, very useful in the day to day life suppose in case of consumption so every rational consumer or we can say every normal consumer he follows this law while planning his household expenditure. As we know, every household, every family man, every family person, he tries to get the maximum satisfaction, he tries to get maximum utility from his purchases, from his limited amount of money. So, he spent in a such a way that marginal utility derived from each unit of money gives nearly equal utility in various goods that he purchase. So, in a consumption, this law is applicable. Now, in case of production also, some farmers, some producers, they allow their or they distribute their limited sources in a such a way that from which they will get the maximum returns or in a such a way that marginal value product derived from each unit of source, it will be same. Then in case of marketing, the consumer would keep in mind that marginal utility of commodity and price of commodity should be equal in purchasing of that commodities from the market. So while purchasing the any commodity, we always think rationally, we always try to get the maximum satisfaction or we spend the money in a such a way that the prices and marginal utility will be same. So, this law guides the consumer to spend the given amount efficiently on different goods which will provide his maximum utilities to that particular 
consumer so then in the distribution so the share of each factor of production is determined on the basis of marginal value productivity as we know there are the four factors of production that is the land labor capital and organization the share of each factor of these factors of production is determined on the basis of marginal value productivity of that particular factor so this law is applicable in the distribution then influences the prices means when the price of commodity goes up in a few of shortfall in supply if there is shortfall in the supply suddenly prices will rise or it will go up so consumer prefers that commodity which is relatively less scarce means so consumer will prefer the those commodity which are less scarce or which are available in the market so this preference of consumer brings down the price of other commodity now in the public finance this law is applicable in the public finance also the government is guided by this law in the public expenditure or by spending the money on the public infrastructures this law is applicable so this is about the practical importance of law of equi marginal utility now the limitations while thinking about limitations you always keep in mind whatever is assume whatever is assume or which are the assumptions just write opposite to that assumption that will be the limitations of law now in case of limitation uh, it needs very careful scrutiny by the consumer regarding prices of various commodities and their substitute as we know in the assumption we assume that that customer or that consumer must have a full knowledge about the attributes prices of the commodities means that is the requirement means that consumer must they must need very clear knowledge about that commodity it is also the limitation more often expenditure pattern is influenced by the habits except except in the case of very high price good for which certain amount of thinking goes before taking buying a decisions as we know for normal person for most of the person their expenditure pattern is depend on their habits their choices and according to the fashion according to the tradition also so in such cases this law is not applicable another limitation of the operation of this law is indivisibility of certain goods which would not permit the equalization of marginal utility so there are some goods which are not divisible that's why this law is not applicable on the goods which are not divisible then further it is possible that buying decisions are influenced by the advertisement in which case rationality creation may not be followed as we know in a recent days advertisement plays a very vital role because of advertisement the sellers they are getting more number of consumers so in that case this law is not applicable now the cardinal approach of marshall has been criticized by modern economist so this is the cardinal approach which was criticized and there it was question questionized by the modern economist so utility being psychological phenomenon means utility is not a actual phenomenon it is totally the psychological phenomenon it is not amenable to measurement by numbers and weights etc means we cannot measure the utility in the numbers or in the cardinally so the marginal utility of money is taken to be constant by marshall which is not common experience of the consumer the marginal utility of money would be more when he left with a less and less money as we know if we having very less money we have more value of that money if we have too much amount of money if we have large amount of money we have a less value of that money that is the marginal utility of money so marshall alfred marshall he thinks that the marginal utility of money is constant that is not practically possible another shortcoming is that it does not help to separate the income and substitution effect means because of this law is not help to make the 
difference between or separate out the income impact and substitution impact on the goods so these are the some limitations of cardinal utility approach and some limitations of law of equimarginal utility so you can refer the book of agricultural economics by subbaredi raguram another book elementary economic theory by kk divet thank you